Over the weekend, uh, there was a story about one of Bitcoin's sort of biggest uh, improvement proposals that's been in the works for a long time. Uh, it's called Taproot, and it's actually a combination of different proposals that have pretty major implications around privacy, um, around scalability, not as significant around scalability, mostly around privacy, and then also kind of the complexity of the things that you can do. So without getting into the technicals too much, I think one of the most interesting areas that we will eventually be talking about but are not talking about today is the question of who will actually adopt this. Taproot, although it's now locked in, won't actually go into effect for five months. And then it's kind of up to the free market, different companies, applications around the world to actually integrate some of the improvements that it offers. One of the primary improvements that it offers is built around the idea of privacy, which is that it makes it much easier to retain your privacy on the blockchain. Now, this is something that has a lot of uh, advantages to it, but one of the disadvantages to it is that it potentially makes it easier to do illicit stuff like mixing coins, uh, if you're a criminal, uh, or if you're just someone who wants privacy, you can do that too. David, I'd like to kick this to you to kind of get us started here. You know, when we're looking at an improvement like this, that is a technical improvement, but on the other hand, has implications for regulated companies. I mean, what do you think of, a, of something like this and a company like Coinbase? Is this something that we'll ever see make it in there or kind of how, how, how do they deal with things like this? Um, well, Adam, you probably have a better sense of the exact process than I do. But um, just to, to clarify one thing, I believe it's, it's primarily, if not exclusively, miners who signal for this sort of upgrade, correct? Correct. Yeah, it's miners who signal for the so, upgrade, and then it's up to the network to implement it. So Coinbase, I don't know how much of a mining operation they have, if any, but certainly not substantial um, in the grand scheme of things. And so they don't really have a say in this. Um, and miners, of course... Um, you know, with some with some exceptions, um, are not subject to the kind of regulatory scrutiny that a centralized exchange like Coinbase is facing. So it is really a situation where a lot of you know, if if somebody believes this is a, a liability for them, it actually in some ways is better because Coinbase doesn't have any say in whether this happens or not. Um, it's again an advantage of the Bitcoin system, which is that this is a sort of broad democratic process. I mean. You can debate the democratic nature of Bitcoin Core, but basically it's there's nobody who's saying, okay, now this is private. And that makes it in some ways a little bit um, easier from a regulatory standpoint to not be the person in the crosshairs, whether you're uh, Coinbase. Um, so, but I think that also brings up the second issue, which is regulatory response. And maybe we can talk about that a little bit more uh, because the, it's, the timing of this is pretty interesting from a regulatory and sort of ESG perspective, maybe. Um, did I see anybody else want to chime in, Ben? I, I sure. just have a question for either ben? ben. Maybe you can address this when you <laughs> when you say what you were about to say. So <laughs> I don't know a lot about about Taproot, and I'm interested in, in the privacy angle. Can you just kind of break down what this actually means, just for the normal person? Yeah. So I mean, the real the real kind of pivot here, and, and Adam, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, is they're implementing Schnorr signatures. Now, this is getting away from their current digital signature algorithm, and these are basically smaller and faster signatures that have the added, added benefits of being linear, I believe we talk about in a bit of an article, which will boost Bitcoin's transaction privacy and allow for more lightweight and complex smart contracts, and just give it a little bit more flexibility and optionality. You know, if you look at something and consider it in regards to like Ethereum, where it's like trying to be the world's computer or something like that, this is giving those smart contracts, which is really, really what Ethereum is built on so a little bit more akin to that in terms of how you know Adam to your perspective developers or businesses can like use them um, and that's some of the interesting build outs here I think in regards to privacy though in particular what my kind of counter to what you were saying Adam is like Bitcoin mixers already exist right all of this tech already exists out there and when it's meant to kind of address this uh, privacy problem that Bitcoin has where it's pseudonymous but certainly not anonymous and in looking at that you know I think that the regulatory response will be interesting. I think regulators look really heavily at this stuff anyway, uh, obviously, as we just saw in Thailand, as we just saw in Italy and other places. So I don't think there's going to be like any immediate response to this. I think this does give credence to sort of what I've heard from some privacy coin advocates who argue like, you know, why do you specifically look at us when Bitcoin and Ethereum and like Tornado Cash and things, there's all these kind of privacy functionalities that are bit, built out on that side. And so I think that, that discrepancies or comparisons get a little bit harder to just situate these two things away from each other as privacy tech continues to improve in relation to Bitcoin itself. 
So, so when it comes to kind of technology around Bitcoin, like the nice part for people like us is that it doesn't really matter, right? Like ultimately <laughs> the technology works. If it doesn't work, then we'll know it because someone will steal a whole bunch of money by way of cracking the Bitcoin network. Um, and so to, again, like it's kind of hard to talk about these more technical topics to the kind of a little more specifics around um, what Schnorr signatures and what Tappert introduces. Um, the way that it gets to privacy is kind of interesting. Basically, these signatures allow you to take what would normally be a bunch of different individual pieces that are recorded into the blockchain, pieces of information, and combine them into one. So what that means is that right now, if you do something like a coin join, which is a technique used mm -hmm. for privacy um, to mix coins, um, it's obvious on the blockchain that you have done that. After Schnorr signatures, that will not be true. You will not be able to figure out that that's what actually happened. This is also true for multi-signature stuff. And the ability to kind of shrink a bunch of different things down into one thing also has implications around uh, the complexity of what you can put in. So you can do more things that then take up a smaller amount of space because they're, again, indistinguishable from a single transaction. So Ben, I'll throw it back to you, but that's sort of the additional context around why this matters and also why a company like Coinbase might have a problem with it versus something uh, you know, else. Yeah, and I think and I think that also increases like the larger anonymity set, right? Like right now yes. what it's doing is when you're looking at things like coin joins, those are red flagged in some instances, some wallets do do this because they imply a form of privacy. If you flip that and every single transaction looks exactly the same, then you can't just look at this, you know, kind of anomaly and say, oh, that's probably something I should look at. Maybe more than exchanges, Adam and, and David, I'd be really curious about how the blockchain analytics firms are going to approach this because they're the ones that really have skin in the game. And so I imagine that, you know, they're already working on cracking privacy coins and doing everything they can to make this process transparent. So I think they're going to be moving much quicker than regulators would in this instance. Yeah, and I honestly, um, I would not at all be surprised if they figure out a workaround. I mean, I'm, Adam, I'm sure you know the cryptography way better than I do, but they've cracked some other stuff that's really impressive. So, um, you know, it seems plausible. The ideal situation, to my mind, would be if this can still be cracked, but makes it a ton more work. Like that would be, I think, from a sort of privacy versus, uh, you know, visibility perspective, maybe a good thing from my perspective. Tap, tap root versus the crypto sleuth spin. You got to write that up. You got to call all those uh, crypto sleuthing <laughs> firms and, uh, and see what they want.